Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to Brian's Horror Corner. Welcome to this horror franchise movie review video. It's part of my current January 2024 series where we're taking a look at the entire Omen franchise, which I have on the Screen Factory Deluxe Edition box set here. So five movies, the original, three, three uh, sequels, and the 2006 remake. And of course, there's another one coming out in a few months. I believe in April or May, the first Omen's coming out, which is a prequel to the original 1976 Omen movie. So I'm sure I'll check that out and give a spoiler-free review at that time, but as I will other horror movies throughout the year. But today we're going to go ahead and kick this thing off, taking a look at the very first Omen movie. And that, of course, is the original, The Omen from 1976. Which, of course, all these movies are on Blu-ray in this collection here. And this one has a lot of awesome special features here. Um, yeah, it's just, that's what I love about Screen Factor when they do a box set like this. They really add the, the special features. So, of course, I have yet to check those out. But the one thing I'll say about this movie is I realize I've never actually sat down and watched it before from start to finish. I'd seen a lot of it. I've seen parts of it like a lot of people have, being familiar with some of the death scenes, some of the iconic scene some of the iconic uh, dialogue and, and things like that but um i never actually sat down and watched it from beginning to end so it, it was good to have this series and to watch this movie from beginning to end so um yeah let's just go ahead and get into it before i get to my review i'm going to give you my short little synopsis about the movie as well as the cast so the omen is a 1976 supernatural horror film directed by richard donner who, of course, would go on to direct Superman a couple years later. And it's written by David Seltzer. And it's an international co-production of the United Kingdom and the United States. The, film, the film's plot follows Damien Thorne, a young child replaced at birth by his father, unbeknownst to his wife, after their biological child dies shortly after birth. As a series of mysterious events and violent deaths occur around the family, and Damien enters childhood, they come to learn that he is, in fact, the prophesied Antichrist. So yeah, that's the that's the gist of the movie. As far as the cast goes, Harvey Stevens plays Damien, the child. Gregory Peck is Robert Thorne. Lee Remick is Catherine Thorne. David Warner is Keith Jennings. Billy Whitelaw is Mrs. Baylock, and Patrick Throughton is Father Brennan. So that yeah, that's the that's the the premise and the cast. Basically, I'm summing up this movie in my own words, it's it's not so much a killer kid movie. I mean, it is, but it's more of a following this couple that as it said in the premise um end up end up the father ends up passing off another child whose mother died at the same time that their child died and so they they try to to make it right by coming together and as time goes on and this child grows up it's not the things start to go haywire start to go wrong in a in a in a pretty freaky kind of way and uh, it's kind of a race against time for this couple, especially Gregory Peck, to find out what's going on, where this child came from, and uh, can there be resolution? And um, yeah, it's a really effective horror movie. I'm going to say that right off the bat. I really, really enjoyed this movie, and I'm really glad to have this box set. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and get into my review about it. So the first thing I can say from a positive standpoint is the score. Um, I actually think this movie has one of the best scores of all time when it comes to horror movies. And it plays such an important role in this movie. I don't think the movie's as effectively good without the score. But uh, I forget the guy who wrote the score, but he actually got nominated. And I think he won an Oscar for the score by this movie. And rightfully so. I mean, the score is just so iconic, so good in this movie. It perfectly encapsulates the suspense, the mystery, and everything going on in this movie throughout. It adds so much more to the movie than an otherwise bland or plain Hollywood score would have. It makes the movie more suspenseful, more engaging, and a lot more impactful. In my, and the best way I can sum it up is there's a scene towards the end of the movie where there's a conflict, a confrontation between two characters, um, where they're fighting and rolling around on the floor. And the scene itself, like there isn't a lot of stunt work, good stunt work being done there. It's just kind of a lot of... Um, just kind of a lot of plain Jane rolling around and trying to fight each other. But the score that comes on while, while this is happening makes it so important, so impactful, so um, um, so important, I guess is the best way to say it. So, yeah, the score, top notch. Um, the way the movie starts off, getting right into things with the story and the characters is really effective because 
right off the bat, we're engaged with these characters. We care about this couple, I should say. We really care about them and, and because as a result of what happened to them. Losing a child in the hospital right off the bat. Um, yeah, really impactful. And as well, and it also raises a moral question right off the bat, as this movie raises many moral questions. There's like there's a big moral question at the beginning, and there's a big moral question at the end, and a couple in between. But um, it's it's very effective, and it only adds to our overall engagement of the rest of the film. Um, obviously, this movie has some of the most effective and iconic death scenes ever on screen that actually build and become more shocking and more visceral as the movie goes on, in my opinion. Which again, just it just builds a part of the overall engagement that I had for this movie. So in other words, like the first death scene has to do is, is one that most people are familiar with. I'm sure having to do with uh, a nanny that basically hangs herself. It's all for you, Damien. And um, that's, a, that's the first one. And then they actually go, I would say they actually ratchet up until we get to a point where there's a decapitation towards the end and somebody falling out of like a 50, a 50 floor hospital into an ambulance. I just think the deaths are really effective because of the way that they just kind of get worse and worse and more visceral as the movie goes on. And that was one thing that I definitely noticed here. Um, I think the performances are really solid here across the board. Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, David Warner, iconic, awesome. But I think the best performance and the one that really steals the show is probably Billy Whitelaw, who plays Mrs. Baylock. Such an effectively creepy and understated performance, a haunting character that she portrays. I mean, it's just so well done. I mean, the performances across the board really add to the the overall uh, seriousness and horror of the movie, for sure, along with the directing. Um, but yeah, the cast, uh, top notch for sure. The movie's so well paced as well. There's really no downtime or scenes that don't have an importance in the movie into the overall story or atmosphere. That At no point does the movie drag or bog down. Um, it's just, again, the directing, the performances, the writing, all top notch for this movie. And as a result of all those things, the movie almost feels too real to me because of the direction, the performances, the writing, and just the overall tone and atmosphere of this movie. It's not one of those cheesy, over-the-top, 80s or beyond kind of movies where it's like, oh, this could never happen, but it's fun. It's a fun time. This is a movie that's, I'm not going to say it's fun, but it's its made in such a way that its uh, it's not over-the-top. It, it almost feels like something that could actually happen. and. Um, that's the biggest compliment I can give to the movie, frankly, because they did a really good job executing it. Um, I could see why this movie in the mid-70s was scary as hell. Um, it probably not as much today because of of how much how many movies have come out since then and everything we've seen on screen. It's just different than than the old days. But for me, this movie still holds up really well because of those things that I mentioned. But um, yeah, the movie definitely has a real feeling tone to it and atmosphere that makes it effectively creepy even now and scary back then. Um, there's no humor, or no winks at the audience. This is, ser this is serious shit kind of movie here, and I love it. One of my favorite and most effective scenes of the whole movie is when David Warner and Gregory Peck are investigating, and it leads them to a cemetery where they discover a couple of, a couple of grave sites and a couple of coffins, and that's as much as I want to give away, but... Um, it's a, it's a very emotional scene. It's a very, um, story heavy scene. And it's also a very scary and suspenseful scene because they end up getting chased away by the sort of demon dogs, if you will, as I'll call them in this movie, the Rottweilers, which play a huge part and a huge role in this movie. Um, it just kind of encompasses the whole movie, really intense, emotional. I love that scene. That scene had that really packed the most punch for me. And then my final pro is the practical effects. Well, you know, well, I said some of the stunt work is not uh, not top notch, and some some aspects of the movie are a little bit dated, as I'll get into with my cons here. But the practical effects they use for the kills, especially, are just chef's kiss, man. Especially as it relates to David Warner. That's all I'm going to say. His character in the movie. I don't want to give too much away, but God, I just it's another movie that just makes me wish that that Hollywood would use practical effects whenever they can and get rid of the CGI stuff. But yeah, that really stood out to me. So I can't praise the movie enough, but I have to stop some somewhere. So as far as cons go, I will say it does kind of have an old school filmmaking 
quality to it that might not appeal to some of the newer generations. With some of the camera work and the filming, uh, they focus on shots uh, for a long time. They focus on certain things longer than they might have needed to or than younger generations will be used to. And that might be kind of a drawback for them. It didn't bother me, but it's just something in general that I could see being an issue. Also, I thought some of the characters' deaths are kind of old school and that they stop and yell no or scream where they clearly could have moved away or ran and avoided the death. Um, but again, that just kind of goes back to the movie making back at that time. You know, it's a little bit more, <clears throat> it's just a little bit more um, like slow motion almost, I guess you want to say. Um, so there are certain aspects of this movie that are outdated a little bit. But again, it's not so much the story, the writing, the performances, as much as it is the technical aspects of the movie. I mean, the movie's almost, what, going on 50 years old now. So that's kind of to be expected, I feel like. But that's just something to throw out there for people, if you haven't seen this movie, just to know going into it. Um, I really didn't care for the final shot of Gregory Peck, where it ends up focusing on gunfire instead of the result of that character. And because they'd shown so much death on screen, I don't know if because Damien was in the shot with them that they didn't want to show the result of that gunfire. But... Yeah, basically, it's just kind of that character that was built up throughout the movie. We don't even see his final sh his final like shot on camera. We just see the bullet flying out of the gun, and they focus on that. Again, it kind of goes back to that old school filmmaking that I was talking about. Um, and then uh, it just kind of ends abruptly, that character and the importance of him in this movie. I didn't feel like we got quite the satisfying conclusion with that character that I would have liked. And then finally, another technical aspect, I didn't think the editing was quite as tight as it could have been. Um, this isn't a movie that's overly pretty to look at. I mean, the cinematography is fine, but this is back in the day. They didn't worry so much about how the movie looked, but the story they were telling, which is a compliment to these movies back in the old days, where nowadays they try to shine them up and make them all glassy and new and more appealing to the eye. Not to say they didn't have movies like that back then. I mean, Suspiria comes to mind right off the bat. But this isn't a movie they were trying to wow you with the visuals or the camera work or the cinematography. It's more or less a movie that they were trying to scare the hell out of you, and successfully so, with uh, with the characters and what was going on screen and the practical effects and the deaths and all those type of things. So, yeah, what can I say about The Omen from 1976, the original? This is a 9 out of 10 movie for me. The only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 is I do feel like there are aspects from a technical standpoint that are a little bit outdated. And then, like I mentioned, that that final shot, that final scene with Gregory Peck, um, I would have liked them to have gone a different route there um, just for a little bit more satisfying emotional impact of that character throughout the movie. So other than that, though, this is a 9 out of 10, an absolute classic horror movie that I will definitely rewatch probably on a yearly or every year kind of run. Um, I love the original The Omen from 1976. So go ahead and comment down below if you guys have seen this movie, what your thoughts are on it. Uh, do you like it more than I do, less than I do? Do you like it at all? Why, why not? Or or do you not like it at all? Why or why not? Um, please like this video and hit the little notification bell down below so you don't miss any of my upcoming reviews for this series. And please be sure to subscribe to my channel as well so you don't miss any of my great horror content, not only this series, but what I have coming up, like the next five or six months of 2024 that I have planned out for you guys, especially a week, about a week from now, my first live video stream. Make sure you stay tuned for that. And I'll put up a reminder in my community uh, tab, probably the end of the weekend, early next week, or three, four days ahead of time. But um, yeah, I'm hoping to get a lot of people on that live stream just to have sort of a horror Q&A and, and stuff. But uh, that being said, I hope you enjoyed this review and you enjoyed this series. Um, I'm really Really interested in checking out all these Omen movies. I know the sequels aren't as good from what I've heard as this one, or even the remake in some people's eyes. But, you know, you got to give every movie a chance. So I'm looking forward to seeing the other movies. Um, but this one definitely stands uh, on a pretty high mountain for me. So with that being said, I hope everybody's having a happy new year. And, of course, as always, stay scared. Bye.